He's been at the president's side since he was simply candidate Trump. On Friday, it emerged Jared Kushner was a person of interest in the FBI inquiry into Russian links not suspected of a crime. This puts the Russia investigation inside the Oval Office. He was the point person, and so it makes a lot of sense that the FBI would want to talk to him to ask the key question at the center of this. Why was there so much interaction, both meetings and communications, with Russians? Last year, Kushner met once with the Russian ambassador and a leading banker. The meeting was never declared by the transition team, only confirmed after media reports back in March. You're acting as though there's something nefarious about doing what he was actually tasked to do. Now, the Washington Post claims Kushner asked the Russians to set up a secret channel of communication. It's claimed that, that would allow them to discuss developments in Russia, but using Russian facilities would also protect them from U.S. government screening. Awfully hard for the president to say, you know, I barely know the guy. Kushner did not declare his meeting with the Russians on his security clearance form. A mistake, says his lawyer, but making a false declaration is a crime. His lawyer says he will work with investigators. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, Washington. Egypt's Air Force says it's carried out airstrikes in neighboring Libya in response to Friday's attack on a group of Christians in Egypt. ISIL has claimed responsibility for the attack, which killed at least 29 people. Victoria Gatenby reports. The strike targeted what the Egyptian president called terrorist camps in the eastern port city of Derna. It was in response to Friday's bus massacre targeting Egyptian Christians in Minya, 225 kilometers south of Cairo. President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi has warned that states who sponsor what he calls terrorism will be punished and that Egypt will not hesitate to carry out more airstrikes. What you have seen today will not be left without a response. The training camps for these elements, as I speak to you, are being bombarded with a massive strike. Egypt will never hesitate to strike the terrorist camps anywhere. Christians make up 10% of the population in Egypt. Attacks targeting them have increased over the last six months. What more are we going to see from Sisi? What more is he going to do? Enough is enough. A suicide bombing claimed by ISIL killed 29 worshippers at the main Christian cathedral in Cairo in December. And last month, ISIL claimed responsibility for bombing churches in Tanta and Alexandria, which killed 46 people. ISIS, you know, they, they try and... Uh, you know, take advantage of the deep-rooted uh, sectarian tensions in Egypt to, you know, uh, you know, swell its ranks and weaken uh, the existing uh, central government and their uh, control over, uh, you know, mostly remote areas in this situation in um, in Upper Egypt and Minya government where there have been historic tensions. Some Egyptians, though, question Sisi's strategy of carrying out airstrikes in Libya. Sisi has no right to hit Libya, and if he knew that this was an area uh, of danger for Egypt, why hasn't he protected all the border, the Egyptian-Libyan border? And how could he, within six hours, uh, have figured out who committed the crimes and where they are from and went out to kill them? Armed groups, some of whom are affiliated with ISIL, have been increasing attacks against security forces in the Sinai Peninsula since 2013. The government says the aim of the military operation there and in Libya is to defeat armed groups that are trying to destabilize the country. But attacks like this show security is still a major challenge. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera.